good to have you back on. I mean, you know, I, I we follow your stuff, obviously, on social constantly. It's been the most hated rally ever the last few years, but a rally nonetheless. But does it really all come down to the size of the Fed's balance sheet? Hi, Brian. Good to be with you. Well, at the end of the day, you know, markets are bombarded with all kinds of information and variables be it slowing growth, for example, or rising growth, or what have you, or of course, you know, China dropping, you know, into a bear market. None of these things matter. There's one constant in the market, and it has been like this since November. In fact, uh, every month that the Fed balance sheet makes a new highs, the S and P follows tick for tack, and that's been going on. And at the same time, it maintains a very steady trend. And as as every time that trend gets tagged with precision. You know, we, we see a rally on the same day, no less. We see it now in the last four months, uh, every time on the 19th and the 18th. So the market remains completely disconnected from anything else but those two constants. And the Fed balance sheet is one of them, absolutely. Well, what's amazing about that is you're pointing to the actual days of the months, Then And we have talked on this show, and I can't speak for other shows, but on this show, we have sort of hammered the idea of options. You've all, we've all had to become options experts, options expert experts. I mean, I think that tends to be driving a lot of this volume. And it is amazing when you point to certain days, how much, maybe if at all, do options also matter right now? Oh, it's it's a big factor, of course. You know, we have all this, the gamma uh, fade going on at the same time and options expirations each month. And the dates I just mentioned, the 18th and 19th in the last four months have actually uh, coincided roughly with monthly options expirations. So obviously we know there's a lot of algorithmic trading and program trading going on in markets as well. And as long as the liquidity equation continues to drive everything higher, uh, you, you, you actually see markets devolve into a program that runs on its own, right? It's not only the 19th that we're seeing the bottoms. In the last three months, we've also seen kind of the peaks of each of these lift move or drift higher moves on the 14th and the 16th. So it's it's a very steady program that runs no matter what happens in the world. And that, that is so incredible. I mean, you think about being able to maybe, you know, professional traders or even non-professional traders just spotting trends, listening to guys like you and saying, hey, wait a minute, all this gamma hedging and all this option stuff around these days, it starts to whatever, let's jump in. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, does it not? It does, and therein lies also a little bit of the danger because I think everybody's trained to just react to to, to the steadiness of it all. Uh, the danger I see are a couple of things. First of all, this trend is extremely steep, and as a result of this steep trend, it needs to, you know really needs to maintain be maintained because if it breaks, then you can have a large technical reaction because it is so steep we are seeing shallower and shallower dips each time around because it has a certain angle to it, right? And last week was a classic example. The same week when the Fed's balance sheet again made a new high, the S&P made a new high, but then we had that drop into the 19th and it stopped right at that trend, right? So it's it's very critical that this continues to sustain itself. Now, you can argue if it just keeps going, you know, you can end up mathematically at 48.33 by Christmas, uh, by the end of the year, uh, but watch out because one time, you know, that trend breaks. And we've seen that a number of times in recent years. We saw it in 2018, 2019, and in 2020, obviously with, with COVID hitting. Once these patterns get ever, ever tighter, once you do have a sustained break, you, yeah. you can see an avalanche of selling coming in. It hasn't happened yet. None, nothing has mattered so far about this program. So I think it's really key to watch how this evolves. Been 202 trading sessions since a 5% drawdown, you know, and then to your point, Sven, we get these 15% declines in three weeks. I don't know if that's healthy. Honestly, I'd rather see a 5% drawdown every couple of months than once a year get destroyed. Well, this is this is the what the excess of of monetary policy brings, right? I mean, we we not only have you know obviously the steady uptrend, but we have the largest disconnect of asset prices from the economy ever. 
And, and as, as long as you can run that separate program, if you will, disconnect it, uh, I guess supposedly it's it's fine. But I, you know, I've been a critic on 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 all this because it drives wealth inequality to a unprecedented yeah. degree. Eighty nine percent of stocks are owned by the top ten percent. And actually, Princeton came out with a study and said that you know this this wealth inequality is inefficient for the economy because ultimately. The, the very rich are saving. This is, money does not make it into the real economy. Now we're getting to the point where the Fed actually is bringing about inflation and housing and food prices and what, and what have you. And who pays for that? Who gets hurt by that? And it's the bottom 50% that do not benefit from these big rallies in yeah. stock markets.